What's up guys, main man Sui, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, and in today's video we're gonna do some story speculation for Tekken 8. We're gonna start by watching this little clip here. So, watching that for the first time was actually a little bit emotional because I had grown to like Heihachi during the story. Thank God they made a proper character out of him. I wish I could the same, say the same thing for Kazuya, but this is where I'm hoping in uh, Tekken 8 they remedy that, they fix him. So, a lot of people, first off, you, you gotta start by saying here that a lot of people still think Heihachi is alive. <laughs> that guy there falling into uh, a bi very big swimming pool full of lava. So, uh, as immortal as Heihachi has been in prior games, I just think he's dead now. I, he's impervious to explosions and all sorts of shit. But he's thrown into lava, so I'm thinking he's dead. And people say, we didn't see him even fall into the lava. No, but I'm thinking Kazuya here is probably looking down at Heihachi falling into the lava. And by this time he must have hit the lava. And Kazuya's just looking at it. So I'm thinking Heihachi didn't suddenly get a pair of devil wings and go, <laughs> and fly away, you know, because Kazuya would probably have been, tra been tracking him with his eyes saying, NANI? You know, so I'm thinking he actually A hit the lava, two died in the lava, and then prior to this, when Kazuya punched Heihachi in the heart, I'm guessing, uh, we hear the dunk, the dunk, dunk. Don't we? It's it's like the punch itself killed him, and now he, he just as a burial throws Heihachi into lava cremating him because it did, that's more what I'm getting out of this uh, so there are some um, deniers here uh, Heihachi death deniers uh, another big topic is will Heihachi be in Tekken 8 and I actually think he will be in Tekken 8 he will be dead but remember that Kazumi in all effect you know was dead during Tekken 7 you only saw her in flashbacks. And what will stop them from doing that with Heihachi? You will obviously see a flashback with Heihachi and that will have him also as a playable character in the game because why the hell would they remove one of the most iconic Tekken characters and not have him playable in the game? All you have to do is have him in, have him in a flashback and then in the story, and then you'll just have him as a playable character in uh, in the roster, and boom, you have one of the most exciting uh, gameplay characters, you know, and uh, charismatic characters. <laughs> uh, come back when you're ready to fight. Eesh. You know, it's uh, it, it just it just doesn't make sense if he's just completely gone and he's not even a playable character. That would be to uh, a huge detriment to Tekken 8. So I, I just don't see that as realistic. Uh, now, as I said before, Tekken 8 will uh, hopefully redeem this guy here, my favorite character, who unfortunately in Tekken 7 was very 2D. There was not no 3D dimensional depth to his character. He was just reduced to a psychopath laughing. <laughs> You know, I turn into a devil, punch people in the face, evil, cartoony villain. And I've seen that he can be so much more. It's like the Tekken 4 ending when they actually had a proper writer. I don't know if they actually had an external writer on this. But rewatch, please, the Tekken 4 ending where uh, Kazuya takes... Uh, uh, the devil is in possession of Kazuya's body and then Kazuya mentally breaks the hold of the devil uh, and then um, just uses the devil as a pawn 
you know, he can, he controls the devil, you know, that's how fucking strong Kazuya is, mentally, uh, and then it's basically about, um, well, again, you know, uh, taking the Mishima Zaibatsu, getting revenge on his father, and his son, who he sees as just someone who has stolen power from him, certainly it's not super interesting, but it's more than just laughing all the time, and, and this is where I want them to actually give him more depth, like we did with Heihachi in Tekken 7, so in Tekken 8, I've said it before, I'd love him to have a redemption arc where he kind of breaks free from this, you know, uh, constantly angry all the time to uh, and just you know, wanting to kill everyone to basically um, uh, going back to, you know, who, who was it that uh, felt att attracted to Jun, you know, what, what did Jun see in Kazuya? I'm... I'm inclined to think that she saw that there is still something, you know, buried underneath all of that, a, a decent person. Uh, and that maybe that tumbled down the cliff, you know, and well, me, maybe the whole thing with Kazumi, you know, him inheriting some devil thing, you know, they've changed the, changed the story quite a bit, it seems. But uh, just going beyond that and maybe some in some moment when, with Jin, maybe close to dying, maybe that's too typical, I don't know, cliche, but that he, you know, gets rid of that and he talks to Jin like his father rather than his uh, devil dad. Yeah, I don't know how to describe that relationship uh, with a few words. Um, but uh, I, I really wish... Uh, we could go beyond that with Kazuya, yeah, but there's a redemption arc before he dies because I think he's in inevitably going to die. And I think, uh, not that guy, but uh, Jin Ka Kazuma, Jin Kazuma is going to to save the world, is what I'm thinking. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna summon Jin. ほう、ムダムダムダムダ。ジン。これを収めるのもまた貴様の宿命。ああ、it visually it's a very appealing image and looks really good but it's so cheesy walking into frame like this covered in shadow it's just as, as typical as it gets um generic hollywood choir Walks into frame with his super cheesy fucking red moon boots. And the voice. Yeah, it's just... Oh well, you know, it's... I guess it's uh, it's harmless. Fits the task. And <laughs> Alyssa. Oh god. Um, so Jin... I don't know, are they going to do anything with Jin in uh, in Tekken 8? He's actually quite interesting. Those of you who have uh, looked at the lore, he's really not your typical uh, good guy protagonist, you know. In, in Tekken 6, he, he does some horrible shit, you know, starts wars, people die. Uh, oh, sorry, voice crack. And it's because he wants to lure out uh, Azazel. And I, he, he does some nasty shit. And, you know, he has this bad boy thing going on, starting with Tekken 6, where he is the head of the Mishima Zaibatsu. Yeah, he is, yes. And uh, suddenly he has these wind poses, like, You're a joke. You're a fucking loser. You know, he has that sort of thing. And it's actually interesting. It's appealing. And question is, how much of that we will see in Tekken 7, if he will still have some form of anti-hero thing going on he seems more like your typical hero here and unfortunately he was in a coma for the entirety of the Tekken 7 storyline which was kind of dull well it, it certainly the writers it fit them very well like 
oh, we really want to end the Kazuya and Ayachi storyline, but how do we explain Jin not being there? He's the most powerful guy in the story. He would beat them both at the same time as he did in Tekken 4. Oh, how do we do this? Uh, does he go on a vacation, maybe, to the Bahamas? No, he's in a coma. You know, it's, it's just a very neat way of sorting that out. But I think, in all honesty, Jin is obviously going to kill Kazuya in uh, Tekken 8. I don't think we're going to get a redemption arc and them living happily ever after. I think, hopefully, Kazuya is redeemed and then Kazuya dies and that kills the devil cycle. I don't know, is, is that going to remove the devil gene from Jin? Or will Jin kill himself? Will he do the Achnud, you know, Terminator 2? There, there, uh, there's one chip left. I can't, I can't do an Arnold. Get, get down. No, there's one chip left. Oh, I did it. You know, and he lowers himself into the lava. Or, or the, no, no, melted steel. And then the thumb. Du, 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 du. Oh God, cried when I was seven and I still cry today. Yeah, I was seven years old when that movie came out. You weren't even born. Um, so yeah, will that happen? Who knows? And will Jun return? Because I always thought, uh, thought she was dead due to I thought it was her head uh, ancient ogre lifts in the intro to Tekken 3 I mean by all accounts Jun was killed by ogre but now it seems they're saying she's missing maybe she returns maybe she will heal Kazuya and Jin oh, and the devil f force or gene is gone uh, there's a lot of stuff they can do and Jun has a lot of fans and she's very interesting in Tag 2 when they remade her gameplay. So I feel, um, you know, they, they have a lot of incentive to bring her back. But they haven't done so, so far, you know, and she's been gone for a long time. Um, so, yeah, it, uh, that's interesting speculation as well. Will Lars have more to do in that story? You know, introduced in Tekken 6 and then since then sort of a player in Tekken 7 but yeah it doesn't really feel like a major player or character compared to the Mishimas but it would be nice if we got a at least a story mode that involved more of the uh, you know classic characters you know like Paul King you know all, all these legacy characters and I have them play a part of the general overarching arching uh story mode you know that involves all of these cutscenes the main story mode uh these character episodes were lame as hell i know that they don't have neverrealm studios um you know pr production value and budget you know being backed by warner brothers um neverrealm studios so I, i'm thinking Bandai namco maybe can't do that but maybe they'll get a bigger budget due to Tekken 7 doing so well. So I, I, I would love to see, you know, Neverrealm Studios does it so well, the story mode. They have all, basically almost all of the characters involved and everyone gets something interesting to do. And that must mean a lot to all of these players to maybe main those characters and see that, oh, you know, he affected the story or he, he did something interesting, he or she. And... I'd love for that to happen because you have so many characters that have potential. Paul has a pretty funny character. Well, he used to have a much more interesting character. He's reduced to comic relief these days. But I'd love to see the old Paul. Tekken 4 Paul. Tekken 3 Paul. He had a serious side, but he could also be goofy. Awesome. Very lovable. Martial law. Same thing. King. Fight for the kids. Um... Brian Fury is pretty damn cool. Have him do something. Yoshimitsu. Uh, Kuma's pretty funny. Lei is pretty cool. Horang. Uh, biker stripper from Korea. Hmm. <laughs> no, but you, you get my point. There's a lot of interesting things you could do here. 
So I, I hope that if they have a budget that they try and, you know, put all of these characters we love into the story mode. It would do so much for it. Um, and will that be the last Tekken game? Who knows? Can you just imagine... Uh, with Tekken 7, they said the Mishima saga ends. It didn't. Uh, but will it end in Tekken 8? You know, will that be the last Tekken game? And we're so inclined to say yes, but with the success of Tekken 7, like, who knows? And Katsuhira Arada saying to me when we talk about the future of Tekken, and he says, again, um, no confirmation on anything. It was an interview, a very casual interview. Don't just... Don't take it as 100% confirmation. But he sounded super optimistic and said, Tekken will go on. You know, so... Uh, who knows? Uh, so, uh, I hope you like this story speculation video. And I hope I'll see you on the next one. Take care, buddy.